Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. Hear what the, our Lord Jesus saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from thy ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of thy word, Jesus Christ thy Son who with thee in the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Good morning, church. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, so that, you're blessed, you, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who causes you, I will cause. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot, and Lot went with him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The psalm for today is Psalm 121. We will read the psalm alternate verses. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe.
Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now, to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who works, who without, without works, trust him, who justify the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law, who are to be the heirs? Faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all, the, all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written. I have made you the father of many nations. So in the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being seen from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having a grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear a sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? 
Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one is ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world may be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my Savior and Redeemer. Good morning. Amen. Please be seated. On this, the second Sunday in Lent, the gospel, the gospel reading for today forced me to ponder on a question how do I get to be anew? How do I get to be anew? Martin Luther called John 3.16 the gospel in a nutshell. This portion of the gospel speaks to our essence and existence as Christians. It is not the easiest to preach and reflect on as it has been traversed so many times before. So what can I tell you about this gospel that you haven't heard before? That's a preacher's nightmare. The question or theme that arises is what is it to be born again? So I'll take a stab and try to find some themes in this gospel that I hope you haven't heard before or that you want to hear again. The essence of being born again is what was the essence of the interaction between Jesus and Nicodemus, one which we as Christians can glean quite a lot from, particularly during this Lenten season. Who was this Nicodemus that came to Jesus the way he did? His name is translated to mean victory over people. That says something about him. He was a Pharisee who, as a ruler of the Jews, seems to have been a member of the Sanhedrin the Supreme Council of the Jews, headed by a high priest with far-reaching jurisdiction over religious, civil, and criminal matters. He was definitely an important person who would not be typically consorting with Jesus. That he came to Jesus at night confirms that he knew how he would be perceived in seeking out Jesus. 
but he just had to see Jesus to satisfy what I call was that inner yearning and that inner tugging in his heart. So he follows his discernment to get his questions answered. Nicodemus said to Jesus, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no man can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Here Nicodemus recognizes the power and presence of God through the works of Jesus, but he still cannot fathom it. It is interesting that he says we, and some Bible scholars attribute the plural we as other members of the Jewish establishment which Nicodemus was a part of. So even though the Jewish establishment did not believe in Jesus, Jesus was not the right man for their time, they were forced to recognize the power of the Holy Spirit and the dynamic work of God. Why else would Nicodemus say we, and we know who he was a part of? We can see Nicodemus's uncertainty because even though he recognizes the power of God through Jesus, it is not manifested in his daily life. So what does he do? He seeks the answer by going to Jesus. In his mind, there was the realization of God's presence, that God's presence was manifest through Jesus and he sought answers. Isn't that what Jesus is there for? To be our solace, our peace and director, even in our most dark, even in our darkest and doubtful moments. Some people may criticize Nicodemus as a coward or hypocrite for coming to Jesus under the cover of darkness. For we know what we associate darkness and night with. But I'm going to go out on a limb and commend Nicodemus for going to Jesus under the cover of darkness and view that action positively in the context that he knew he had to see Jesus and he did what it took. He would not have gotten the answer that he wanted if he consorted with Jesus in the traditional way under the cover of daylight. There would have been too many distractions. He would have had to justify his answers to his colleagues on the Sanhedrin Council. People would have been gossiping. He would have had to justify what he did. But Nicodemus focused on what he wanted to achieve was an answer from Jesus. So he took an unorthodox step. And it is in that context that I commend him for manifesting his faith in his actions, even though it's not very orthodox. Through to Jesus' form and style, he turns the conversation to what matters and points Nicodemus' attention to the transforming power of God and to the reality of God's kingdom. Jesus sets the stage by telling him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. In sum and substance and as we know, God's kingdom transcends the boundaries of our earthly existence. God's kingdom is not determined nor made up by our carnal structures. As children of God, we are not shackled by the routines of our immediate environments or practices as good Episcopalians. Anyone who knows me well knows how high church I am. We must pay respect to the altar. We must sing the hymn the correct way. We must process correctly. All of that, the Eucharist must be done in the way it is written in the Book of Common Prayer exactly by word or by title. While that is important, very important, and that has a role in our spiritual life, that is not what defines, that is not what totally defines our relationship with God. Being in true communion with God's spirit goes well beyond those liturgical processes and physical labor in this place. Nicodemus however, bounces back to Jesus, of course, being far from the spirit and asking, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can, anyone, can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? In my holier-than-thou state, here I'm tempted to think, 
How dare Nicodemus question Jesus? But the lesson to be learned here is that Nicodemus was willing to pursue the questions he had to make his faith complete. He did not stay within a form or a structure or human expectation. He needed answers. His spirit was yearning and he was going to wrestle with Jesus. He realized his inadequacies in understanding God and Jesus' works and did not lose the opportunity to engage. He could have stayed silent and, de and discerned his faith with his human intellect, which I'm sure he had. But he made himself vulnerable to God through Jesus. Nicodemus had enough influence and pull in the society to shape the responses to his questions and to get many people to hear him, believe him, and follow him. But his faith and spirit and the spirit within him superseded that. What is our approach when we have questions of faith, the Holy Spirit, and where God is leading us? Like Nicodemus, do we speak to God? Do we lay ourselves bare to him and follow his guidance? The alternative is to set up to discern God through how we, our human thinking. What is our approach when, we, when in our spirit we need to discern something with our fellow human? Is it that we just set something up in our own minds or we approach them in the context of the Holy Spirit? And Nicodemus is not alone in this experience with God. In the first reading today, God sends Abram forth with a promise to make him a great nation. Could he foresee this? Or when in the twilight of his, his and Sarai's life, the angel foretold that they will give birth to a son? What about Moses when God spoke to him through the burning bush? Daniel in the lion's den and among countless others. These were all situations where the spirit of God was at work defying human machinations. This group was steeped in God's spirit and knew that the outcome depended on how they exercised their faith. Abram's response to God's call teaches us to have faith when we discern God's gentle voice in our lives. We are to act with faith and go forward, even if it means embarking on a scary uncharted course. I ask, is there a new path, a new journey, a new way that God is calling you this morning that you are prepared to respond to him in faith? God is spirit, and we must worship him in spirit and truth. Jesus brings Nicodemus back to the spiritual realm and nature of God. Jesus said to Nicodemus, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Jesus declares the importance of the holy baptism and of being one with him in myriad ways as we Christians do, be it confirmation, the Eucharist, etc. Friends, we sang earlier, the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the new communion by water and the word. Water of holy baptism speaks to holy baptism and the word speaks to the spirit. We are baptized Christians. We've come this far. How are we engaging with the spirit of God in our lives? Jesus seeks to bring Nicodemus. Jesus seeks to bring about a rebirth in Nicodemus. But it does not happen immediately and overnight. And this is one of the most interesting themes in this gospel for me. Jesus begins the process of the rebirth, but he does not stand around and expects to see an immediate transformation in Nicodemus' life. Jesus planted the seed and started the work, exercising the faith we should have when we do the work of the spirit and we plant the seed. The result is not ours, the result of God is God's. We are God's missionaries put on earth to start his work and put our faith in him that he is going to guide, mold, and ensure the outcome. 
John 3.16 is often quoted ad infinitum, but it is the following verse that forms a great pillar of our Christian comprehension. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world through him might be saved. Nicodemus' rebirth happens over the course of a long journey, which began under the cover of darkness when he took a chance on Jesus. He was an uncertain fly-by-night wannabe disciple. It didn't happen right away. But the evidence of his transformation comes much later in the scripture. In John 7, Nicodemus speaks to a group of unbelieving Pharisees against unlawfully seizing Jesus. In John 19, after Jesus had been crucified, Nicodemus joined Joseph of Arimathea in giving Jesus a traditional Jewish burial. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, which was very significant, even though I can't explain it because I haven't studied that in detail, but it's very significant in the Jewish tradition. Nicodemus left with questions in his initial conversation with Jesus, but the seed of the spirit was activated and evidence through his follow-up actions in caring for Jesus after his death. All that is asked of us is to believe. Believe in God through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit to be fully immersed in commune with him. After needing 13 liters of blood for surgery at the age of 13, a man named James Harrison pledged to donate blood once he turned 18. It was discovered that his blood contained a rare antigen which cured rhesus disease. He had donated blood a record 1,000 times and saved 2 million lives. He started the work, but he never knew. He died not knowing how much of an impact it was on fellow man. As Christians, as we lay the seed of the spirit, as we discern God's call the way Nicodemus did, we may not know where that word would end up. For those of us who do gardening, you may plant a, tr a seed in your yard, you may plant a tree. You may not live to see that tree flourish, give shade and fruit, your grandchildren may. Jesus gives the analogy of the wind that is felt but invisible. The origin and destination of the wind is not known. Everything that is real is not perceived by our five senses alone. The effects of God's spirits, God's breath are all around us and we feel them when we are born of the spirit. It is our fervent belief and trust in God when we open our lives to the Holy Spirit that through Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be renewed. In the midst of this Lenten journey, we may allow our doubts and questions to dig into our uncertainty. May we be broken open by a love that evades even our wildest imagining until at last we come to the foot of the cross to meet Jesus and walk in his ways. Amen. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, like true God from true God, of one being, through him all things were made. Thus and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Spirit. I think that's how you're going to disturb everybody. And was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in one spirit, O the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. And spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people, Form 1. In your bulletin, it's page 10. In your Book of Common Prayer, it's page 383. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Carly, our bishop, for Rose, our priest in charge, and for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For Joseph, our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this village of South Orange, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, and if there is anyone traveling this week, please say your name if you are on Zoom. If you are in church, please come forward. Anyone on Zoom? Anyone traveling on Zoom? Uh, if not, we're asking people to come forward. We've gotten, we started last week uh, going back to what we did before the onslaught of COVID. Okay. Yeah. Are you going someplace this week? No. No? Okay. Um, right now, we're going to pray for people who travel, but I'll pray for you as you travel back and forth from your home. Is that good? Okay, great. We're switching houses in a group of hundreds for the first time. Bayberry will be later on. So, okay. Joe. I'm going to Charlotte and also to Akron. Okay, Joe is traveling to Charlotte and Akron. I got a Christine is coming back from Thailand. And uh, Christine, Maisie's daughter, is coming back from the island. Anyone else? Let us pray. O oh God, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, in particular all these gathered here and those who travel with them. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the concerns of the members of this congregation. For the Reverend Jim Warnke, who has COVID, 
Winston Cummings, soon to be having a heart procedure. Lisa Powell, who is in hospice. Saul, who has lymphoma. And Rob, who needs a kidney transplant. For Sue and Abby, Nestor, Bailey, Janice, Judy, Daniel, Bob, Elaine, Earl, Edwin, Paula, Trudy, Mary. You may now add your own petition, silently or aloud. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the thanksgivings of the members of this congregation, we pray this month for the outreach and justice committees. We pray in this month of March, which is Women's History Month. Please add your own petitions now. And now for birthday celebrations. Anybody celebrating a birthday this week or in the past week? On Zoom, please say your names. In church, please come forward. Jared, my son. That there was his today, okay. March the 4th. Okay, Jed, whose birthday was yesterday on March the 4th. March the 15th. Yours is the 15th. Okay, wonderful. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as your days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Anyone celebrating anniversaries? On Zoom, anybody is celebrating anniversaries? And nobody in church? We will pass over the anniversary prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed. For the Right Reverend John Palmer Kronberger, Ninth Bishop of Newark, and the Right Reverend Dr. Robert McLean Thompson, Retired Bishop of Kingston, Jamaica, who was laid to rest last Monday. Please add your own petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression and degradation. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. that we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord oh Lord, Lord, our God. Amen. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people 
in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as of ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. And walk well in the world and walk in our bones. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, peace of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Peace to everyone. Peace be with you. What a beautiful morning. Peace and blessings, everyone. Thank you. Peace to the Lord, everyone. Peace of the Lord, all. Yeah.
Good morning, everyone. While we have all the rest of our announcements later on, what I will do is talk to you about directions for communion. And those of you who are here every Sunday and hear this every Sunday, I'm sorry, but for those of you who are not, first of all, just follow the directions of the ushers and go around the altar rail, because now we're, we're back kneeling at the altar rail. You have the ability to th receive communion in the three different ways. If you want only the host, just hold your hands out and I am going to drop the host into your hands. There are two ways to possibly receive wine. On my right, which means on your left, looking at me, if you want intinction or dipping in the wine, I, you have to either put your hands crossed like this or point to the chalice and I will dip the wine in and then drip, drop it in your hand again. And as more and more people are actually drinking from the cup, um, you're free to do that and that person will be the Eucharistic minister on my left, which is your right. right. So three different ways, um, receive as you may. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself to us, an offering and sacrifice to God. We have.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord unto, unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the high highest. Blessed is he who the cometh in of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image. And of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance for me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy people, do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son has commanded us to make, having in remembrance of his blessed passion and his precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And with thy word and Holy Spirit, bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we and all the whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
our daily bread, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, I believe that you are risen to us. Thank you. I love you above all things. I'll be burning. I receive you as an act of age. Come ritually into my heart. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness toward us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of the Son, the blessed company of all thy faithful people, of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus our Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world with end, and amen. Bow down before the Lord. Keep this your family, Lord, with your never-failing mercy, that relying solely on the help of your heavenly grace, they may be upheld by your divine protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, of course, there's a number of announcements. And uh, just because it's not in here, and I actually remember it at this very second, um, we do have Stations of the Cross every Friday in Lent. And I just want to, I know the fish fry is going on before and after that, but you can come eat fish and join us in this practice that has been around for millennia. Um, for those of you who want to try it out or if it feeds your, per feeds your spirituality. So confirmation class um, is collecting money for victims of the Syria Turkey earthquake. And it says here it's going to be a, there a jar in the back of the church and Kathy it okay if you turn around in the back Sandra is holding it up um, this will be collected at least throughout all of Lent um, and uh, in any case so please donate if when you can I'm not saying if but when you can and what you can and plans are also in the uh, works for a bake sale and so thanking you in advance. And for the youth group, um, both leaders are not here today, the, our new leaders, but even if they aren't, you have a choice to go over to St. George's in Maplewood to join them and we're working with them on this. Um, pray pizza and pause. It is every Sunday at 6 p.m. And um, so today I am doing, um, it says part one, we'll see how many people are interested. Uh, it's going to be right in coffee hour, we'll take over the lounge. Um, and it's a go the gospel of Matthew and the Jewish religious year. And there's some study that has come out that people have mirrored the Jewish liturgical year and with the readings and the holy days that are celebrated and the readings of the Gospel of Matthew. And so if you're interested, um, I don't think it'll be that long and we'll talk about if we want a more in-depth study of some things afterwards. Okay, let's not forget, um, we got a significant number of ESL registrations on Thursday evening. So if you're inclined to help out in any way, we have enough teachers for the classes but that means we don't have subs um, and we could always use aides. Um, so please talk to me or Adrian's not here, so please talk to me. Um, and then let's see. Other than that, um, next week is Barbara Wright's 100th birthday celebration. So um, that will be a lot of fun. That's it, except for the people who are, yes, or at least one person coming forward. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am Susie Carr Ellis, um, longtime member of SAC. 
um, been going since I was 10 years old. I won't do the math for you. Um, <laughs> due to a transition that naturally happens in life, um, Sunday school is continuing um, as with myself and Miss Adams, we're continuing the wonderfulness that Jennifer Bailey started. Um, so we took a two week pause, but we're back and we're in action. So we have, as with church, in person and virtual, um, we do need help. Uh, as continuing with Reverend Rose said, we need subs because um, along with the transition, um, Tamisha had a wonderful promotion at work, but that requires her to work some Sundays. So we need someone with technical abilities to help facilitate virtual. Um, there will be times that my family won't be able to attend church, so we need someone to help facilitate in person for subs. Uh, we need extra hands, so if teaching is not your strong suit, we just need an extra adult in the room because the three J's over there did a wonderful job of <laughs> corralling people from not escaping, but they deserve a Sunday school um, for themselves, and if we need to wash hands or go to the bathroom we need an extra adult in the room um, if you don't want to help during Sunday on Sunday that's fine and we deliver Sunday school bags in Union all over West Orange and Orange and East Orange and Newark and in Maplewood so if on a Sunday you have time um, on a Saturday I'm sorry um, if, and you know, we could help us with the deliveries and help us and making um, the bags, times to do cop, uh, copies. If you're shopping and want to pick up a snack, because there is a little snack and a small drink that goes into the bags, and we make 25 bags um, a week. There is a Christian Ed budget, but as with the budget in the church, it only goes so far. So if you could want to pick stuff up, I happen to work in town, so you could drop it off um, at the church office, and I'll arrange with Audie um, to pick it up and. Uh, lastly, I learned today um, there's a wonderful tablecloth that I will be washing this evening um, that covers the table because the table is sort of uneven. We have some wonderful artists who color outside of the lines and all over the tablecloth. Um, so if there's anybody who's so inclined, we just need a way to cover the table that we could easily wipe off right now. It's a wooden table and its size works our purpose, but we do need some way to cover it. So if you're so inclined, um, please see me um, after church. I will be in coffee hour. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Good morning, friends. Good morning. We are looking to recruit acolyte ministers. So if you have grandkids, nieces, nephews, children, anywhere from ages, let's say seven or eight and above, we are looking to recruit and we will be having a training session next Sunday after coffee hour. So if you would like for them to participate and there's more about what is expected in the annual booklet if you'd like to read up on it and you're welcome to be at the training session also so again next sunday the 12th we will be having a training session for acolyte ministers and to that end i want to thank the campbell voucher young men who always step up to the plate and um, do so. I want them to come out and take a bow as you congratulate them. New and old. No, for all acolytes. So acolytes who are now, acolytes who would like to join, Phil and I and Reverend Rose will be having some sort of training session after coffee hour, which may encroach upon your confirmation training also. So thank you.
Are there any other announcements for the good of the church? If not, let us sing. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Yielded his life and atonement the son. And opened the life gate, the home go in. Praise the Lord. Today's service has ended, but our service in the world continues. Thanks.